but I can assure you that in five seconds' time, you'll hear hello to 2020. We cannot control the natural disaster, but what we can do is control our response. With bushfires looming, a heat wave expected to push temperatures over 100 Prince degrees. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle just announced that they are, quote, stepping These back. These authorities have traced a new deadly virus back to this seafood market in the city of Wuhan. They say so in this case, we just don't know. Tiger King was the number one tweeted show in the U.S. this week. My name is Joe Exotic, and this is Sorry. San Francisco, 21 to nothing. There has been a verdict in the Harvey Weinstein rape trial. Harvey Weinstein found guilty of rape and criminal sexual. There are now more than one million confirmed cases of the virus here in the U.S. Broadway theaters today extended their shutdown. Let's stop. Go, 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 SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. With monuments being torn down in recent weeks from coast to coast. As a monster category four. In my lifetime, I expect to see three, four, perhaps even more women on the high court bench. Women not shaped from the same mold, but of different complexions. I did live life waiting for those moments. I am your president of law and order. I accept this nomination for president of the United States of America. Hi, my name is Anthony Aria, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and guitarist from the state of California. Um, I perform my original music, which is rock with an influence of blues and jazz, and I'll be attending Stanford University this fall. Hi, my name is Nuhum Koita, and I'm a contemporary dancer from the state of New York. I'm drawn to the artistic expression that can come from the human body, and I'll be attending the Juilliard School this year.
Benjamin Rawson. I am a classical musician and I hail from the great state of New York. I'm mainly a pianist, but I love to play other instruments as well as compose and film score. This year I will be attending Harvard University and the New England Conservatory. Hi, my name is Nicholas Turgeon. I'm a visual artist from Greenville, South Carolina. Um, currently I'm attending SAIC and I make a lot of short films and sculpture and performance type stuff.
Okay. Um, as far as divider goes, I think I um, approach divider really as like a drawing exercise. Uh, but I think it ended up being a little bit about electronic mediation. That was definitely something I was thinking about um, during the time I, I made it. It was in the kind of early weeks of, of quarantine. Um, but I, I was basically making marks with the aid or, or I guess mediated by um, a camera that I had set up and, and connected to an old TV. Um, and so the the act of like taking something from the outside and extending it into the room and through not only virtual means but with a like a virtual end result as a drawing um, was definitely something I was interested in. My name is Megan Hipsky. I'm a classical cellist from the state of Indiana, and I love playing music because I want to evoke the history and the experience of the composer who wrote it. I'll be taking a gap year during 2020. Hi, my name is Sage Croft, and I'm a filmmaker from Florida. The films that I direct encourage a deeper reflection into our own beliefs and ideologies, and I'll be attending Chapman University this year. People don't seem to care anymore, but who can blame them? The music to my ears is all too often drowned out by the shouting at the front gates. There is beauty in order. Yet when one's life falls into disarray, we often overlook the beauty that surrounds us. Once upon a time, we found our lives surrounded not only by such beauty, but by people. But now, people are dangerous. Any person is dangerous. Every person is dangerous. A potential grim reaper to be found lurking around every corner. And so when such strife comes, beauty is often the first to go. The theater, once a safe haven, became a war zone. Closed. Yet we humans adapt. We find new ways to discover beauty. Desperate for any connection, we reach out to the creatives of our world. And they listen. Yet most people will not quite listen back. The music drowned out by the world. The fighting. The desperation. The monotony. The unknown. So I do my small part. I shave my face. I put on my tie. And I turn the rest of the world off. It's the very least I could do. So I say to all of the creatives of our world, play on, someone is listening. I promise. I'm Mallory Siebert. I'm an actress from the state of Florida, and I do primarily musical theater, but I love all forms of theater and acting. I'm attending Elon University this fall. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Funamura, and I'm a classical flutist from New Jersey. I'll be going to Stanford University in the fall, and one of my goals is to make classical music a much more welcoming and inclusive art form. Thank you. 
Wait, Laura, Laura I think you're muted. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to press the little microphone in the bottom left hand corner. <laughs> this one? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> oh, cool. Wait, what does this button do? It turns off your camera. Yeah, it <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh, whoops. Wait, where is it again? There we go. Hi. Hi, Val. Hi. How's Italy? I mean, Italy's Italy, you know. Um, but how are things at home? How are things yeah, without good. me? Good, good. Much more quiet, serene, peaceful. You know, better, you know, much better. <laughs> I hate you. No, it is actually weird, though, not hearing the flute 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss performing? You know, it's weird. I thought I would be suffer a lot during quarantine, but all this time is kind of me making me fall back in love with the flute. Because, you know, <laughs> I mean, remember the huge stigma around classical music and being like one of the only Asian girls at school? I mean, yeah. I perpetuated that. No, you hated being reduced to that stereotype. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I love the flute, don't get me wrong, but it was kind of a, a love hate kind of thing, love shame maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but having time to take a break from flute and performing, because I always viewed flute as a very performative yeah. thing, um, it forced me to realize how much, how much I relied on it to express my emotions um, that I normally mm -hmm. wouldn't be in touch with. Yeah, like therapy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I miss performing. <laughs> I do. Or I'm really lonely. Mallory. No, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really feel things that deeply in real life, you know? I mean, I, I guess it's because I don't take risks. I mean, you, you know me, I don't do things. But, like, when I'm on stage, I feel like I'm really living, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm acting, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of everything. I'm not scared of being judged, rejected, or loved. I'm just exhilarated and alive. So that's gone. And on top of all that, you aren't even here, and you're the only person in my real life that I feel like I can actually be myself with. So I'm just... Wait, I'm so sorry, Mel, but you cut out there for a second, and I didn't hear the last bit. Wow, Zoom really picked a great time to stop working, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It wasn't really that important. No, it was. It was. I mean, at least it sounded like it was. You <laughs> froze. I miss you. Hey, we're going to be back together soon. I mean, you don't know that, though. Well, we have Zoom. Yeah, it'll be great when it's not interrupting me when I'm trying to spill my heart to you. <laughs> I love you. Laura, I think he froze. Somebody hold me too close Somebody hurt me too deep Somebody sit in my chair And ruin my sleep And make me aware of being alive Being alive Somebody need me too much Somebody know me too well Somebody pull me up short And put me through hell And give me support For being alive Make me alive Make me alive
Hi, my name is Anoush Pagosian, and I am a classical clarinetist from the state of California. I love collaborating with composers to premiere their works, and I'm attending Columbia University and the Juilliard School this year. Hi everyone, my name is Izzy Cho, and I'm a poet from the state of Illinois. My writing challenges and celebrates my lived experience, as well as the underlying humanity in us all. I will be attending Harvard University this year. Ours. Like all others, we never thought it would happen to us. Even if the earth sputtered still on its axis, and every radiant city shut forever its ferris wheel eyes, we would remain just as we had been found, passing the plate of asparagus, mowing the lawn, dancing in the kitchen as the world held its breath. Destruction was a scentless word we did not know. So what to do when we, too, found ourselves at the end of our lives? At the precipice below which our faces, familiar and strange, pressed up against the broken glass. The world shrank from earth to house, fist to dust. We looked across the backyard, that small plot of green, the tongue of asphalt where the car lay dormant like a sleeping animal. The trees, the wet grass, the rasping of gravel, our breaths small and dipping and infinite. We looked for the first time at what was ours. Hi, my name is Pranav Tadakanda, and I'm a classical Indian dancer from the state of Maryland. I'm a student of Kalaratna Guru Vempati Ravi Shankar and Srimati Priyanka Vempati from the Vempati Ravi Shankar School of Kuchpuri. I will be attending the University of Pennsylvania this year. Hi, my name is Mia Palumba and I'm from South Florida. I'm an artist and designer and I create work that focuses on human interaction and sustainability. And I'll be attending Tufts University this year. Hello, 
So I'll be showing you all a piece from Vande Umastam, which is an invocatory piece in praise of Lord Ganesha, the remover of all obstacles that lie in the path of achieving one's desires. Lord Ganesha is compassionate towards all of his devotees and removes all worldly difficulties. This piece is particularly interesting because it brings a familial perspective. The dance song is titled Vande Umasatam, where Vande means to praise, Uma means goddess Devi, and Sutam means sun. So this item is praising the son of goddess Uma Devi, who is Lord Ganesha. The dance song is in Ragam Hamsadwani, and the composer of the song and choreographer of the dance is my guru, Kalaratna Guru Sri Vampati Ravi Shankar. Thank you and I hope you all enjoy. I wanted to create a piece that centered around family dynamics in a tangible and clearly visible way. I've always had a deep interest and attraction to modular art and design, so I wanted to continue experimenting with breaking up the traditional family portrait into separate pieces. Utilizing found cardboard, oil pastel, and acrylic paint, I created a modular puzzle that the user can change and interact with that shows different configurations of members in a family. I made the decision to make to base it off of my own family as a tribute to them but also because I can only truly speak to my own family's dynamics and relationships. For the first time in years, all five adult members of my family lived together in my small childhood home for most of this year during quarantine. Growing pains and having to readjust to living with each other magnified the relationships between us and gave me a lot of insight into how we all coexist with each other. Each family member is depicted on their own individual puzzle piece, painted and drawn in a stylized and exaggerated way. This piece, this piece marks a very specific time of my life and captures each member of my family during that time that was so transitional for me. Hi, my name is Jeanne Wong and I'm a writer. 
writer from the state of Idaho. I write short stories about the strange, lyrical, and poetic, and I will be attending Harvard University. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Funamura, and I'm a classical foodist from New Jersey. I'll be going to Stanford University in the fall, and one of my goals is to make classical music a much more welcoming and inclusive art form. In the future, we wake up to goldfinches singing a soft yet dedicated song. We wake up and remember our dreams, which are about something familiar, like our mothers embracing us when we come home. We stand up and stretch our arms up until we sense all the space in us all the potential to be filled with odes. We press our hands against our bedroom walls, feeling the quiet vibrations inside. Later in the day, we find our studios painted with the colors of our lives. Dream for the unfurling of our bodies when we grow hour by hour. Orange for the citrus juice we squeeze out, pouring vibrancy into our glasses. And blue, the calmness that happens when we sit down and create. As we breathe life into art, we think we could do this all day. The video lag audio disconnections and never-ending loneliness from before turned into an inside joke. Can you hear us? We've told a story about how much we thought of each other in our poetry books, Chopin, Etudes, comedic films. Sometime soon, we will write the ending to the story. But for now, let's talk about the beginning. It starts with a quiet tap and a high-pitched note. Then we see our mothers, fathers, and sisters, and our brothers, our friends, and our friends' friends. We all sit together to watch the sunset and nighttime's arrival. As the stars emerge, the sky turns into a novel of slumber. We don't need worse to understand we are here for each other, that the birds in the distance are calling us into the future. Do you remember our lives? We do. We would do it all over again. If I had to describe 2020 in five adjectives, they would be confusing, unsettling, frustrating, never-ending, and certainly memorable. 2020 has been challenging, lonesome, unclear, uh, revealing, but it's also made me feel appreciative. 2020 to me has been unpredictable as my life has seen very quick changes I never imagined could happen. That sense of isolation. Um, that's kind of come with a bunch of artists being basically like locked up in their homes. Music and other kinds of art can serve as hope in times like these 
whether it's listening to an old recording from before this year, or reading a good book, or even a project like this where you get to work with other artists from a distance, of course, but still work with other artists. It provides a sense of hope that things can get better and that regardless of what happens, people, art, and compassion will thrive. One of the things that's um, been great about this whole process was it allowed me to work with people I wouldn't normally work with and in mediums that I typically wouldn't work with or even consider. I believe that artistic collaboration and art in general is what will save humanity. You know, poetry is, for me, um, a really creative and critical way of generating answers to the questions that matter most to me. Who am I? You know, um, who do I want to become? How do I navigate, you know, the communities, the places I belong to? And what does that sense of belonging look like? Art enables us to see commonality in our feelings and sentiment across time and across cultures, which, which brings us a sense of unity in, in times of distress. Art and design allow me to express my observations as I adjust to becoming an adult in a challenging time. Dancing allows me to experience the beauty of human connection. I mean, I'm a little biased, but I feel like music is one of the most fundamental and authentic ways to express your experience and emotions with other peoples and share that with others even if they seem wildly different on paper. I've always believed that the reason we create art is so that one person who comes across it will feel just a little less alone. So I think art is especially important during this time because it reminds us that no matter how alone we may feel and how unique our struggles may seem, there's always someone who understands and there's always someone who's going through the same thing. Art is what unifies us as a society. It's what brings humans together. I, I've really responded to art that like challenges and, and asks me to feel. I feel the most like myself when I'm playing and to me that's just the, the sole reason why I do play. It's the way that I can honestly express my thoughts and emotions to other people. Art, and more broadly culture, forms our identities. It epitomizes our values and it informs how we feel. As long as we're human, art will always have a place in our society to make us better people. I think art is always going to be productive. Although we may not be able to connect in person right now, we can still use arts to uplift and nurture ourselves until we do end up together again. Because they'll read about the year 2020 and the history books and all that we did. And I really think that in response to the arts community, um, will be, look at how hard they try. Because we, the people, have the power to build a better future. There's new research out this morning that suggests there has been a record drop in greenhouse gases worldwide. The donations, the drawings, the community support on the outside is making a difference inside.